Hello everyone. <laughs> I just had a thought just before I came on the line. Yes, that's what I wanted. Ah. Uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to Still Live uh, podcast again. So um, let me have a look. Where is this? Uh, yep. I should have some downloads, shouldn't I? Where are the downloads? Hello, hello, who's there? Who's there? Let me have a look at the chat. Having certain technical problems uh, today. One of the technical problems being that uh, I'm trying to download a photograph onto my phone like I did the last time. It hasn't really worked properly. But that's the way of um, live streams, isn't it? So let me just uh, uh, see if I can pick out uh, files. It should be download, shouldn't there? Where the hell is the images? Let's have a look. Oh, there she is. That's good. All right. No, I have the images. So um, just to let you know what's been going on in my... Uh, hello, how are you doing? Project Vintage. How are you? Good to see you. Nice to have you back. Um, just to, to tell you what I've been doing all week. Uh, so this week in my class was uh, the second week of my six-week term. And I had everyone uh, painting... Uh, clear glass so the because there were new people coming to the class um, I had to uh, go through my basic I've got a kind of a system and I, I send people through a basic uh, uh, sort of course of six items the first being a single object like a lemon or an apple or something like that the most simple most familiar object you can get the second week it's glass so I for example let's have a look what did I have you know you might paint something like this for example you see and the thing is is that you can see this glass is kind of green i presume who else have we here tell tell identify yourselves so where well, you can see through the glass it's obviously very clear but when you see through lots of glass for instance at the sides and the edges you're, you're looking through a glass you might be looking through that much glass it kind of uh, can often have a color uh you know it's usually a kind of a gray or if it's colored glass and uh, a bit of color to it it might be uh greeny gray and I've got a good example here so that's one of the items I picked up in a charity shop uh, so there's lots of uh, gray green glass here quite thick um, lump of uh, heavy glass this one so I had them also uh, each one had a different object and I did that over three weeks and let me see so where's my oh yeah so one of the the, the um, one of the hey miles how are you doing good to see you you are yeah so everyone's looking very well from from my point of view so that's my the demonstration from tuesday night to uh, uh last night god what day now is the night before last wasn't it so uh, there if you can see it there and the object is is to sort of get the the thing is was what people generally uh do is, is paint uh, they paint all the outsides of the uh, the object, you know, sort of the background and the foreground, and they tend uh, to to delay putting in the the colour on the inside. And, and uh, um, my sort of thesis is that you've got to paint the inside there and then. You know, but, uh, when you when you're when you're painting the outside, you've got to be painting through the, the the glass as well. You know, so which is kind of seems to be a bit of a, uh, a sticking point for some people, and next week in fact is is going to be uh, a silver object you know and silver is um it's almost the very same as glass so it's just, just to run people through uh these sort of exercises of increasing difficulty uh, and get them to paint um them from life the basis of my class is painting from life it's very important to paint from life and not from photographs uh, where you can, because the painting from life will inform the, the painting from the photographs. So uh, I'm just setting up here. Now, um, Miles, I think it was you, wasn't it? You sort of suggested that I, I paint a Fauvist uh, uh, painting uh, you know, in the manner of, uh, of the Fauves, like Matisse, I suppose. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. So when I change my camera, let me make sure I can do that. 
uh, screen. Yeah, well, that, that's kind of half of it. So at the moment, I'm laying out my palette. Color looks a little bit odd. That green, oh, that yellow, I, I think, looks slightly toxic. But let me just continue laying out my palette. Uh, cobalt blue. I always lay out my colors in exactly the same way every time. All my colors, that's cobalt blue. This is permanent rose. Permanent rose goes here. And I've got my burnt sienna. Burnt sienna goes up here. And I'm keeping my palette down to the, the almost the bare minimum. And everyone sort of uh, in impressionism, impressionism tends to talk about sort of staying away from black. So I'm going to put black on. Okay, so let me put the black there. Not too much of it. And that's my my palette there. Okay, I'm going to paint with this brush. You see the size of it compared to my finger there. Looks to be about uh, half an inch or something there, like that. Um, that's what I'm going to paint it on. Then if I can just maybe pull up my camera just a little bit hopefully that stays in in focus yeah and I'll, I'll be coming across with my my palettes uh, occasionally and what I'm going to paint let's have a look at it if I can put that just there because I'm going to paint this lass here okay it's in a faux for style so as you can see it's quite drab She's got lovely, lovely looking girl with uh, um, red hair there. Okay, I'm going to try and stick that to the side where it can be seen. What I might, in fact, do might be easier for you is if I turn this around, okay, and just put that there and then paint on, divide it in half there. And this tape here is called frog tape. You know, it's low tack tape. So it's not going to, it's going to be difficult to pull, pull the stuff off after I've been painting. So this would be my area to paint here. How's that? Let me, let me pull up the chat again. Yes, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the foes too. Now, I'm not going to put myself forward as, uh, as, as being the absolute expert in painting foes style. But um, I like it because it, it forces me to uh, to not be too fussy. Let me see if I've got... Allow me just to get my uh, my shop coat. Because it's actually very, very cold in here today. It's freezing and in Ireland at the moment probably is where you are too let me put that on there that's better Whoa. and um yeah there was kind of ice on the on the on the water in the bucket in the garden this morning so uh let me just pull this over and if you have any questions don't hesitate to put them in the in in the comments be nice to uh nice to see them I'll, I'll try to keep an eye on them let me just Pull this thing across here now, uh, up there. That's great. All right, so perfect. You might not have been able to hear me. Let, <laughs> I just have my microphone attached to my, uh, let me just put that back on. I, I forgot to put the microphone actually on. My, can you hear me? I'm not a very technical person, am I? Let me have a look. Yeah. So let me know if, if, if you have any difficulty hearing me. That should be on now. Uh, yeah, it seems to be registering. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is grab my solvent. Uh, let me go, go and put that uh, again. Uh, yes, that's better. Uh, 
Oof. Putting that away. Put the chat so I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Project Vintage. So what I always do is I start out with uh, a wash because a wash uh, it lends uh, an extra dimension to your painting. That's uh, one reason. There's several reasons for painting a wash, I think. Um, first of all, you've broken in the canvas. Second, uh, you've brought the, the canvas down to roughly the same sort of uh, tonal value as your palette. Not very much in this case, but very often, if you've got a clean palette. Uh, another good reason is, is the chance for um, happy accidents or unintended consequences you know so let's have a look let me put this down here I'll just tamp that down now yeah. so that's tamped down there and now I'll do a uh, great that's thank you miles for let me know that let me put her across there I'm only gonna be painting her head and shoulders anyway so um, then I always draw in Burnt Sienna 2, so I'm not going to spend too much uh, uh, time. For me, the, the, the Fauves were um, engaged in trying to, I suppose, break down all the rules of colour or, or not be bound by them. Uh, they seem to sort of be more in, uh, interested in colour temperature than than uh, um, you know tone. It's not going to be very big, is it? So, and then there's this area of her neck. Nose, eyes, mouth, shoulder. Put that there like that. There's every chance I'll um, make a, a bags of it, but uh, so there she is. So there's uh, what have we got about uh, our lightest light is kind of uh, and ref the reflections in our hair, especially up here at the crown and coming down the side there. Uh, a darkest dark in here. Okay, so that's what we've got. So. I, think I might get myself a, a, a second brush as well, a smaller brush. It is quite a small canvas, isn't it? So I'll get the small round as well. That one there. That'd be sort of a, a good size for this canvas. Okay, so first of all, I, I don't want to get myself uh, involved in too much uh, accuracy. I have a tendency to, to start trying to be too accurate now. So put an eye there, an eye there. Mouth there. Okay, so I'm gonna start out, since she has red hair, with a blue. Got lots of hair, this girl. Yeah. In those shadow areas, I'm going to put the shadows in now. They're very dark. It was almost um, sort of almost chiaroscuro sort of uh, feel to that that painting, which I have to avoid. Okay, so I'll get a bit of purple and put that in there. Purple would be a good color for shadows. Similarly around the eyes. N nose there. Let's put in some of the red hair.
there. How's that for a lovely red? I can continue it around with some more red there. And uh, features there, the flesh tone. And her uh, very dark, dark, um, I don't know what you call it. She looks very Irish, this this girl. So, um, looks like she stepped out of a, a historical film. So, and then to her, her sort of very drab clothes. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to her face again. Yes, getting bogged down in detail. It's an awful thing. So I'm going to get my smaller brush again. This paint, by the way, is uh, Windsor and Newton. Um, uh, Griffin Alkid. I don't know whether you, you have those in the States, but uh, um, it's it's oil paint that has a resin in it, so it actually is quite quick drying. I suppose by the day after tomorrow, it'll probably be touch drying. So um, let's get more paint like that. Now I want I do want a dark. Of some, so I'm going to grab some. I put some uh, white into my purple last time, so I'm going to. Put a bit of delineation around the hair there and just show that it's hair by putting in some lively strokes there yeah the background is all dark isn't it background is all dark Oh, dark. What am I going to do? Oh, message came up on my phone. Hello. Get off. And she's standing like, like a quarter turn towards us, isn't she? So, um, yeah. This is a good exercise to uh, stop yourself getting uh, into detail. I'm not going to necessarily finish off all those parts there. The brightest bright. I think I'll mix up some. I will keep that bright now. Put in some lively strokes just to now I don't think you necessarily have to change absolutely everything so uh, I think I will put in uh, her lips being red yeah let's put in some shadows in her in her face okay so blue there blue there the hair is casting a shadow on her face so that can be blue too 
and under her chin. And then I can put in some lively strokes there. And let's go back to her face. Shadow under there, shadow under her. There. Let's restate her eyes in the in the dark. Let me come down. Yeah. Get some more strokes in there. Put in a bit of a reflection on her lip there. Shape her eye a little bit there. <laughs> Nose. Well, this poor girl knew what was happening to the, her image. <laughs> And then there's a light across her shoulder there. Coming down there like that. Now let's do more with her red hair. So it's coming down. I'm looking at it from a strange angle. Now, a bit of delineation never did anyone any harm. I'm gonna get some black, mix it up with some burnt, burnt sienna. And just give her some that. Now I'm going to mess around with her hair again. Well, I am going to put some red into it. Yeah. I'm really going to places looking for muses and get myself arrested. Yeah, let's put the. Anyone like to be my muse? Let's put in some darks there. They didn't seem to pay any heed to accuracy. The 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 foves. The wild beasts. Let me put in a bit of a, a highlight on her nose. If I can actually get the...
Let's see if I can get in a, a bit of shape on her eyes as well. Have you seen the Scottish colorists? I love the Scottish colorists. I, can, I must sort of uh, investigate more Peplo and all of those guys. I have to stop myself from actually sort of going for accuracy in this because I have a tendency just to to do something like that. So I have to stop myself. From striving for it, it's not that I get uh, a particular accuracy anyway, but uh, let's get some more. We've got one Fove, uh, Fovis painting in, in our National Gallery here, and uh. It's really very interesting, sort of. Uh, I can't remember who it's by though. Let me just make her face a little thinner. Get some uh, accuracy, and also to leave some of the. Uh, Michael Palin. Wow. Yeah, I must look look out for that then. Is that on his travel show, I wonder? Yeah, that'll do. It, it, what this is is I really like about this is the way you move the paint around on this. So it, since you stop worrying about accuracy, you just sort of let the paint glide over itself on the on the surface. It's it's actually quite nice. You use a lot of paint. Don't worry about the accuracy. I know I'm repeating myself. I can't talk when I paint, to be honest. I find it very difficult. What's that? There we go. Concentrate on two things at the one time. Let's put some uh, shadow under her eyes. And now back to that delineation. Mess, big glorious mess. Let's get her, move that. Make her a little more rounded there. Darker, darker notes under the eyes, I think. I like Michael Palin. He's uh, one of the good guys, isn't he? Much more engaging than, than his partners in crime. In, uh... 
that's an interesting thing about Monty Python, actually, is that uh, I, I read somewhere that they kind of grew out of the um, the Dada movement, which is where you uh, you just were entitled to take the mick out of absolutely everything. I only read that a few years ago. I'd never it never struck me before that that's what they were up to, but a lot of them were doing the same kind of uh, thing. I never knew what the Dada movement was. It came after the First World War, didn't it? When people were disillusioned. I need to get that dark in the eye again. Restate that. If I go any further, then it'll stop being um, uh, Phobis and turn into be, being sort of me trying to sort of get accurate again. And that's not the point of this. So I'm just going to take off the tape. I tape it because I'm painting on um, oil painting paper. Uh, I like the effect of the... Uh, almost the, the, the kind of framing effect that you can get from putting tape on it. It's just a little conceit that I have. What was that? That was what, I don't know, 15 minutes? Where are we now? Oh, 44, maybe it was half an hour. Good God. Time does pass when you're, um, when you're trying to bullshit <laughs> like mad. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, look, here's me again, sort of just trying to sort of uh, get myself, you know, back on track as a as a, a painting that a, an illustrator would do. There, I, did, I needed to put that in to give her an ozone. Yes. Yes. Go, well, I, I, I hope that helped. Yeah, Vic Reeves. I used to love him. I used to get home from the pub and uh, put on uh, Big Night Out. And, uh, it was absolutely crazy. And it helped to be uh, slightly uh, skew with to watch it. And isn't it amazing how I, some of you aren't in the, uh, in the sort of ambit of the, of the BBC and all that, but uh, there was a comedy duo, Reeves, Reeves and Mortimer, but how um, uh, Bob Mortimer has kind of seemed to become the dominant one of the two. For me, he has anyway. He's an, so naturally funny. It's uh, unbelievable. So let me just change cameras again. Um, hide on stream. And I should appear with any luck. Yeah, there we go. All right. So um, what, do you, what do you think of those apples? I'm just trying to put on chat again. Okay. Yeah. So, just to, to to recap, let's bring it up to the camera a bit. I don't know whether it's easy. I mean, it's 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 rough, but my my look, there isn't actually here because I'm so I was I was painting at a kind of a, an angle away here like like that. I was painting at an angle away from me because of the way the cameras are all set up. Uh, I, it's hard to actually see down on top of anything, but as soon as I turned it up towards me there, I can see that there isn't even any paint there apart from the wash, which is, uh, I don't know, it's just interesting for me to see it. Um, yeah, the colours as mad as I could get them with uh, the colours that I have in my palette. Uh, accuracy, practically nothing. I think it probably uh, helped to have a painting that's more, that's bigger, you know, 16 by uh, 20 or something like that. Uh, this, this is about what we call A5, about half a magazine page uh, size. Yeah. Did, did that help? I wonder. You know, uh, let, let me know. Uh, um, and also let me know if there's something else that you'd like to see. I mean, I don't cover all kinds of painting because uh, I probably couldn't do all kinds of painting. Do you know what I mean? That some people uh, uh, have styles of painting that, you know, I, I probably best sort of not trying to emulate because you know it's it's so particular so uh, do you have any any questions that i could answer even 
I mean, just to, to while, while you're thinking stuff up or whatever, I'll just tell you what I've been doing all week is uh, uh, doing digital work, in fact. Um, so I, I came, as I approach retirement age, so I'm 61 now, so I've got five years left of me, I'm thinking more and more about my pension and how I'm going to sort of manage that. And uh, since I don't have a pension, uh, uh, apart from the state one, I'm probably going to have to sort of uh, have lots of... Um, product that I can sell so one of the things is to is to make um, sort of posters and things like that that can sell without me having to actually sort of do too much work afterwards or they can be licensed or whatever which is another way uh, thank you for the the compliments uh, uh, both of you uh, miles and uh, project so uh, yeah and so I, I've been doing uh, all this digital work I, mean, I use I don't use Adobe because William Scott. You see the, the guy with the, the gold leaf? William Scott. Um, I am woefully ignorant about, uh, uh, about you know, all the artists that can be, can be seen. While you're uh, doing that, let me have a look at William Scott, just so that I can... Is it a style that I could uh, have a go at? It's good to have a good to, to work on styles because uh oh my goodness yeah wow that's as minimal as you can get yeah spent his youth in northern ireland belfast college of art yeah that's interesting because it looks uh very very simple but i would imagine it's actually deceptive the shapes are quite sort of um particular if this is the same William Scott hmm they would look lovely actually uh, with acrylic you could do could do those uh, they almost look like mono prints yeah um, yeah I mean to, to show you um, the digital stuff Maybe I'll, I'll just uh, show you next week. I'll put it in a couple of slides and show you and ask you how I'm getting on because um, I make these things. And then my daughter, who's a, yeah, that's that's the one. I did see that, the frying pans in the kitchen stuff. All right, yeah. So I'll, 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 um, I'll have a look at that. Yeah, maybe I'll do a couple. That'd be interesting because it I mean, certainly would be a way to, uh, to, to stop being uh, accurate, you know, sort of start, to get away from, real life they're, they're quite beautiful i have to say yeah. um yeah so yeah i'll show you next week if you uh, if you tune in a couple of the, the digital things i do because any you know i'd like to hear what you have to say about it too because i don't know whether any of this stuff is, will be worthwhile at all you know so uh i'm particularly interested in as i say of uh, licensing you know try and get maybe a, a kind of a greetings card company to to use them things like that all ways to try and earn a, a crust. You never know. So uh, that'll do for today. Um, thank you very much for coming along again. And uh, um, I hope to see you next week. Who else is here? There's a, there's a few bodies in the in the in the room, as far as I can see. Uh, have I missed anyone to say hello to? Um, yeah. So look, that'll do for this evening. And uh, I'll hope to see you next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to go over to London uh, uh, this when the weather gets better. I'm going to go on the mo motorbike and I'll pop into the Tate again. Yes. Okay. Listen, thank you, uh, Project Vintage, for coming and Miles. And I'll see you next week uh, with the help of God and the following wind. All right. Cheerio. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>